So today we're going to look at Tai Chi as an exercise for everyone. Tai Chi really is something that anyone and everyone can do. And think about it. It's safe to do. It's very gentle on your joints. It's easy to learn. There's no special equipment needed to learn Tai Chi or to do it. It challenges your muscles in a different way. We're not hard and fast. We're actually slow and soft and rounded. We focus on our breathing and it's very adaptable. It's very modifiable for any skill level. So Tai Chi really is exercise for everyone. And it's not the movements that matter. It's the underlying principles. As we've seen through these last four weeks, it's the underlying principles that bring these benefits. Applying these principles is why you want to do Tai Chi because it does help you be more balanced, helps you deal with stress, helps your brain improve, helps you be as healthy as possible. And it's an exercise that you can do for the rest of your life. It's a long-term, lifelong learning event. So since we can really focus in on those underlying principles and not the movements, really the movements can be done in any order that you want. You can do any form that you want. So today we're going to start with this simplified eight form and we're going to do it in different ways. The first one we're going to do is just the traditional standing simplified eight form. So just stand nice and tall. Think about being suspended from the crown of your head. Let your body relax. Think about your shoulders being in harmony with your hips. Take a nice deep breath in, breathe it out and sink. Think about being rooted and grounded. Feel your feet and open. Preparation, taking a nice deep breath in as you come up, letting those elbows drop, breathing out. Now we'll do repulse the monkey. We don't step in the eight form bringing that left hand forward, then the right hand comes up and over, and we rotate. Rotating on that central column, repulse the monkey. Now bringing your weight over to that right column, holding that ball to the right, step out on the diagonal left with brush knee. Think about moving from the Dantian, not overreaching. Now bringing your weight over to the left, step out, brush knee. Keeping those shoulders in harmony with your hips. Bringing that weight back, holding that ball. Now part the wild horse's mane. Let that rotation open up your body gently. Thinking of your substantial and insubstantial as you change weight. Step out, part the wild horse's mane. <clears throat> now step back. We're going to do wave hands like clouds. Stepping left for two steps. Rotating on that central column. Now step right for two steps. <clears throat> then bring that weight all the way over to the left and lift your right leg into pheasant stance. Now bring the weight to the right. Let that left leg be insubstantial and lift into pheasant stance. Now bring the weight over to the left and that insubstantial leg will kick. And then letting the left be insubstantial, kick. Bring in your weight over to the left, holding the ball, step out on the diagonal, ward off, lead with the Dantian, grasp the bird's tail, roll back, rotate and press, Pushing Chi. Bringing your weight over to the left, 
Let that right leg come back. Bring your weight over to the right, holding the ball to the right. Step out, ward off. Grasp the bird's tail. Roll back. Rotate and press. Pushing chi, bring that weight up onto that left. Bring that right leg up and then open up into return the tiger to the mountain. And close. Now the simplified eight form is very simple. It's especially good in that it doesn't take up a lot of room. You can do the eight form anywhere. You can do it in a park. You can do it in a very small hotel room. You can do it at the office. It takes time as you're doing it to think about those underlying principles. You might do the eight form one time through thinking about leading from the Dantian. You might do it another time through thinking about your breathing, really slowing down the movement and breathing deep and long. But now when I say there's Tai Chi for everyone, perhaps there are people that can't stand even long enough to do the eight form. So can they do Tai Chi in a seated position? And the answer is yes. And the extended answer is they still need to focus on those underlying principles, even seated in a chair. And that's where they're going to get benefits from Tai Chi. So let me get my chair. You get yours. And when you sit in your chair, hopefully it is one without arms, but you can still do deal with arms if you have that. I want you to sit forward on the chair. In other words, don't sit back, leaning back against the chair. Okay, sit on the very edge and bring your feet a little bit forward so that your legs are at a 90 degree angle. Thinking about columns when you're teaching, when you're um, helping someone in a chair do Tai Chi, you want to talk about their columns. One straight down the center of their body, one through each shoulder, through each hip. We want to keep those, sh those columns intact. We want the shoulders to be in harmony with the hips. In other words, we don't want to have a posture like this and we don't want to have a posture like this. We want a nice, strong, as if we're suspended from the crown of our head, letting our body fall naturally into a good alignment. So from this position, just think about taking a nice deep breath in, breathing out, let your hands fall beside your hips, let the hands be nice and soft. Think about being rounded as you come up in your preparation, breathing in, and breathing out, rotating, doing your repulse the monkey. Think about those delicate ladies wrist, keeping your joints nice and soft and open. Now holding that ball to the right, step out gently with your left foot, kind of on the diagonal and come forward with brush knee. Now notice, I'm not brush knee where I'm breaking my columns. I am thinking about moving a little bit to my left over this left leg with my Dantian, but I'm not pushing with my hand. Now bring that left foot back, hold the ball to the left, step out with the right and brush knee. Bringing that weight back, Holding the ball to the right, step out left and part the wild horse's mane. Think about rotating as much as you can, then bringing that left foot back, step out right, part the wild horse's mane. Now we're going to do wave hands like clouds. Obviously they're not going to step, but focusing on rotating on that central column allowing the arms to be nice and loose 
Thinking about breathing in as you come to the left, breathing out as you go to the right, breathing in nice and soft, long and slow, breathing out. Good, one more, bring in your weight over to this left column. Now, that doesn't mean lifting a cheek, okay? That doesn't mean breaking your columns like this. When you bring your weight over, you do feel a little bit of a emptiness in this right cheek because what you need to do is lift into that pheasant stance. Then bring the weight over to the right and lift into pheasant stance. Bring the weight over to the left, lift and kick. Bring the weight over to the right, lift and kick. Now holding the ball to the left, step out with the right and ward off. Grasp the bird's tail. Think about your posture, keep those columns intact. Roll back using that rotation. Rotate and press. Pushing Chi, think about leading from the Dantian. Now bringing your weight over to the left, let that right leg come back. Holding the ball to the right, step out with the left, ward off, grasp the bird's tail. Roll back, rotate and press, pushing Chi. Good, bringing that left foot back, open up the right, open up your body, nice and relaxed, return the tiger to the mountain, reaching forward, and then coming into your clothes. So from a seated position, you still need to think about posture, columns, rotation, breathing, that ball of energy. You actually need to think about being rooted and grounded from this position because if you bring your feet back and you're on your toes like this, you can tell you're not really rooted and grounded. It almost makes you feel like you're going to fall forward. Whereas if you have your feet uh, in front of you like this in that 90 degree angle, you can feel rooted and grounded. So all of the underlying principles still need to be applied as you're doing your Tai Chi seated. So really anyone with any ability can be doing Tai Chi. Let's think about the person in the middle, someone that doesn't need a, to be seated all the time necessarily, but might feel more confidence if they had a chair in front of them, maybe their balance is a little compromised. Maybe they haven't worked on it. They've just started learning Tai Chi. If someone like that needs to have a chair to give them that confidence to stand and do the form, that's awesome. We want them to have that confidence. We want them to be able to stand because that's going to strengthen their legs even more. It's going to give them more confidence in movement and give them more independence as well because they'll feel better about movement. So how do we do the eight form again with a chair? Well, obviously this right in front if they feel like they're wobbly, they can just grab on. But encourage people to stand, take a nice deep breath in, and then open up. Think about preparation, very simple move, but incorporate that breathing, dropping the elbows. Good. Then repulse the monkey. Even if in this rotation they feel a little wobbly, their hand is right there. But that's the beauty of Tai Chi and the lifelong learning is you do it over and over again and you see the improvement. Now bringing that weight over, teaching about columns, weight shift, substantial and insubstantial, 
holding that ball to the right, can step out left, a small step, brush, knee. But look at this, as they do their brush knee, hopefully they can do that, but if they need to grab onto the chair, it's right there. Thinking about your substantial and insubstantial, bring your weight to the left, step out on the diagonal, and brush knee. Bringing that weight back to the left, step back with the right, step out, part the wild horse's mane. Try to incorporate that rotation. Bring the weight back to the right, bring your weight to the left, then step out, part the wild horse's mane. Then wave hands like clouds. You have the option to do wave hands like clouds without stepping. They can stand just here, or they can attempt with the rest of the class to step because it's only two steps and that chair is right there, right? And then as they come back, then they're behind their chair again. Bringing that weight to the left, come into pheasant stands. This, perhaps if they're close to the chair, they might need to open up their knee just a little bit to the side, that's fine. But they actually have that chair there to help with pheasant stands. Pheasant stands, remember that they can still do pheasant stands with their foot on the ground as well. They don't have to lift that high then kicks. You will probably need to kick to the outside, but that's okay. Turning so you can hold on to the chair and kick. Then bringing the weight to the left, stepping out on that diagonal, ward off. Grasp the bird's tail. Roll back. Rotate and press. Pushing chi. Bringing the weight to the left, bring it back to the right, holding that ball, step out, ward off, grasp the bird's tail, roll back, rotate and press, pushing chi. Now with return the tiger to the mountain, I would encourage them to step back and then open up to the right so they can return the tiger to the mountain and then close. So I'm going to get rid of my chair now. And thinking about how many benefits there are to Tai Chi and the fact that we're able to make this wonderful form of exercise accessible to anyone and everyone. We want them to get the benefits by learning about the principles, by being able to experience that relaxation, that stress relief, by improving their balance, even in a seated position. Everything is accessible with Tai Chi. Now let's do the 24 form. And I want you to think about as we do that 24 form, you can actually do that from a seated position. You don't do the turns. You obviously don't move forward and back. You don't go backwards. But all of that can be modifiable to, for someone to learn in a chair. So don't limit the learning opportunities to just a simplified eight form. You can expand it and help people challenge their brain even more.